I just saw the craziest thing. I was uh, on my way to an appointment and I saw this big black truck with lights on it. I saw this guy, he pulled on the curb like gangster style. He hops out of the van, well it's a SUV, lights flashing, pulls out a switchblade. I was like, what is going on with this? And as I drove on by, I saw that it was code enforcement and he was about to wreak some havoc on some real estate balloons. Code enforcement, the enemy of real estate agents, the enemy of business people, the enemy of anyone trying to market their business in a deliberate and fashionable way. Dang, I look kind of rough today. I'm kind of fresh. We're, we're a little fresh. Just a little bit. Welcome to another edition of Every Man's a Millionaire. How you doing? You like that little story at the beginning? Well, I got some more stuff. Money don't care who makes it. It don't care if drug dealers make it. It doesn't care if businessmen make it. It doesn't care if prostitutes make it. It doesn't care if uh, Osama bin Laden made it. Money doesn't care. Money is 100% agnostic. I was thinking, and I do a lot of that these days, if men went after money like they went after women, would they have more money? It was a thought process that I was pondering in the middle of the night. I have a Facebook group, Disruptive Male Group. You have to be male to join, links below. And I just noticed the posting happens is mostly about relationships in some form or fashion. Now, we're gonna change that, don't worry, and there's a reason I allow it, because it's human nature. What I want you guys to develop is the money mindset. 90% of the time, I think about how to make money. 90% of the time. When I'm watching a television show, when I'm watching a video, when I'm out in public, I will see some things that the dots will connect and it will give me an insight or a process on how to make money. It's an automatic thing. What you think about the most of the time is what you're going to dwell on and it's gonna be the results of your life. So if you think about being broke all the time, you're gonna be broke. If you think about having women in your life, you're gonna have women in your life. If you think about having shitty women in your life, you're going to have shitty women in your life. This is what's going to go down. For, so for me to come from the, the normal mindset, the pedestrian mindset, because money don't care who make it. Money don't care. Money does not care at all. But part of the process, part of the system is something that I have not really thought about, that I have gone through a deprogramming process. I've been deprogrammed for a long time. I don't think like the average person because I've been deprogrammed. Many of you are still programmed. And I'm gonna talk about this and this little stuff. It's not like big, massive, earth shattering stuff in your personality. It's always the little stuff. For a long time during my deprogramming, I used to calculate how much money I made on a 40 hour scale. It made no sense, but I used to do it. It's like, wow, you know, all right, so I've made $3,000 today. So per 24 hours, well, no, per eight, because I used to cheat, and then I started um, calculating what I made per hour based on the 24-hour clock, because I make money seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I was like, yeah, 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 I feel good. And it was just stupid. But I was still programmed, I was still part of the metrics. If you want to make money you need to have a make money mindset, not a 10% or a 20% mindset so you can make a gang of money and you can sit down, you can chill, or you can start living life the way that you really wanna live life. Well, newsflash, the life that you're living is the only one you're gonna get. 
So I suggest that you make it the best of the best of the best of the best, sir, right now. This afterlife thing, it may be there, it may not, I don't know, but I'm moving myself, I am living now, I'm living in the right now, because we don't know what the future is gonna hold. You have to abandon that mindset, which is gonna be very hard, because like I said, money don't care who makes it. Money has no religion. Money has no racial preference. Money don't care who makes it. But see, part of the problem is you care how you make it. Before I got to doing what I wanted to do for a living, to make money, to be happy, to be fulfilled, I had a business that required me to trade time for dollars. Storage auction business was very time intensive, it was very labor intensive, but I was trading time for dollars. But I was trading time for a lot of dollars. Uh, my, probably my estimate during the storage auction time, I was probably about 200 to $300 an hour. When, you, 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 when you're like making money like that, it is per hour, but there's so much money, you, it gives you leverage to do other things. But one of the things that I wanna to bring to you is many of you wanna make money doing what you wanna do right now living how you want to live right now and you don't want to do what you can do you want to do what you want to do but you don't have no experience case study me i had dreams goals big ambition i was ready to rock the world but there was a fundamental problem that i have and i think many of you share this problem I had no experience in doing nothing, except working in a lab in the hospital. That was the totality, the totality of my experience level. That was the totality of my value set to the world because that's all I knew how to do. I was a good person. I, I, I thought I was a decent husband, a good father. World don't care. Money don't care. Money don't care who makes it. Money's agnostic. See, this is where I believe, and you correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, that many of you feel that if you work a 40 hour week doing whatever, you should be able to have the life that you want. Many of you believe that if you're a good person, you don't do anything to anybody, you don't mess with nobody, you should be able to have a good life. Many of you believe that you should have your life subsidized by others because they have more than you do. In some shape, fashion, or form, that seems to be coming out. Now, when I was deprogrammed, the boarding house, I began to understand that the world worked like that because it does work like that for some people. It actually works like that for the majority of people. The majority of people work 40, 50 hours a week, the major, if they have a job, that is. You know, if they don't have a job, they out there. But for many people, this is how it works. But it doesn't give you escape velocity. You will, I mean, you, you might, even if you had a really good job, even if you're making 75, maybe 100K a year, you would have to make that kind of money for 10 to 20 years and have a certain level of financial discipline for it to really pan out for you. It may not happen the way jobs are today. So many people are in this situation of, I can't live how I wanna live, so when I can, I'm gonna go on vacation. When I can, I'm gonna treat myself. When I can, I'm gonna spend a large percentage of my money on luxuries because I need that to feel good about myself, to dull the pain, to have a form of escapism. So it's this cycle of you doing what you don't wanna to do to make money to live, then taking money that you could be using to start a business, to go on vacations, to uh, buy stuff, to dull the ache of not making the money you wanna make by doing the things that you wanna do and living how you wanna live. So being the basic person of work, 
spend, work, spend, you're in the trap. You're never getting out that trap. I'm going to explain to you how I got out that trap. I was having lunch, well, dinner with Tyron last night after he did the live stream at Disruptive Mail. Check it out. It's loaded with gold. I could talk to him this way because I can't talk to you this way, but I'm going to try. And I know I'm going to get in the comments, but I'm a big boy. I got my big boy pants on, so I'm ready. My problems are first world problems, but they're still problems. So unless I'm speaking to someone who is doing well and living how they want to live and making money how they want to make, I can't have a conversation with people because the first thing that's going to come up like, you complaining? So here we go. Brace yourself. Last year, I wasn't really happy doing the consulting. I was making a fantastic amount of money, but I wasn't happy. But I knew that I had some clients and I finished out virtually all the contracts. And then I didn't do it anymore. Many people would have thought that that was crazy. But see, they've, they've not walked in my shoes. My shoes have almost died. And one of the components after I came out of that experience was it's got to be fun. I got to be doing stuff that I enjoy. So I pushed all that money to the side, took a huge pay cut, and now I'm doing what I want to do. Now let's kind of unpack that and look at it for what it is. How did I get to this place where I could turn down all of this money to go over here in this place and do exactly what I want to do live how I want to live, live where I want to live, drive what I want to drive. How did I get here? And the answer is very simple. I did a lot of things I didn't want to do. The storage auction business was a mixed bag because I was addicted to it. So it wasn't like there was this burning passion for storage auctions. It was an addiction like crack. I'm going to be... I used to start trembling before auctions. And when it was a good unit, my heart would start beating fast. I started sweating. Everybody had a tail. People knew when I was on the unit because I would get, I would just tense up, my muscles would squeeze, and I start, and I'd just focus in on it like a dog, like one of those Irish setters. I was addicted to it to the point that my health suffered. Does this sound familiar? So it wasn't like a passion. It wasn't like what it is today. So I did the storage auction thing. I did the Craigslist thing. I worked um, a lot of hours, many days, seven days a week. I was always in the warehouse. I was always doing something. I was always listening. I worked a lot. Then my partner was diagnosed with cancer. I got sick. And at that moment of sickness, I had clarity because Anyone who's almost died or anyone that's gone through any serious health crisis, you get real clear on what's important. You become fundamentally clear. It's just like when lightning strikes in the middle of the night, it gets that clear. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to get rid of this house. I'm going to do this and I'm going to put money in the bank and I'm going to give myself two years to make it as a writer because that's something I really, really wanted to do. That's something I was dreaming about. That's something I wanted to happen. But how did I get in that position? I did a lot of things I didn't want to do. This is where many of you are slipping. Uh, I think Johnny Carter, he came out the truck and he's going to take a less paying job so he can start doing what he wants to do. So <laughs> congratulations, because that's what you're going to have to do if you want to do what you want to do. Because until you have a certain level of experience, a certain level of social value, marketplace value, you're trapped. And the only way you're going to get out of that trap is to work it out. So what happened? Storage auction business. But before that, I was in the boarding house. Well, before that, I had jobs. But what I did is each year of my life, I gained new skill sets. That's what you got to do. So if you're like I was in 1997, good looking, hard working, good person, but no skill sets 
you fucked. No one cares how good of a person you are when they need something. No one cares. Yeah, you're a good person, but fuck you. I need a doctor. Oh, you're a good person, but fuck you. My tooth hurts. I need a dentist. They need people with valuable skill sets. And this is why often people with valuable skill sets are assholes because they can still be an asshole and still get money because people need them. And I'm not saying go out and be an asshole. What I'm saying is you have got to get more skill sets. You've got to drop your ego. You've got to think that you are smarter than people who are doing better than you. And this is one of the things I had to let go because I used to be a big time hater. I was just hating all. I was just, man, I had hater raid packs all up in the kitchen. And one day I realized I'm hating on these people but they're doing better than me. They have better lives, they have better health, they seem to be happy, yet I'm over here in the boarding house hating because I'm not living like they are. So I let the hate go and I started doing what I could do and I started being creative and I started acquiring new skill sets. So the big thing you gotta do is acquire new skill sets. At least four or five a year. If you just really good in your job and nothing else, you're a sitting duck. Because there's two things that are going, there's two forces. Automation and technology and your static skill sets. And your static skill sets are, you've got these skills, but you don't have any more. It's kind of like having a million dollars in the bank, but you're spending. And one day, because a million dollars in the bank is a lot of money, but it's a finite level of money, you're gonna go to the bank and there's gonna be a hundred bucks in there because you kept spending and you didn't add any more money to it. And you're just like, wait a minute, you know, 10, 10, 15 years ago, I had a million. And they're gonna be like, but Mr. Carter, you were spending, you drew money out every week, you drew money out every day, there was bank fees and stuff, now that you only have a hundred bucks. Oh, wait a minute, it's the f -f first of the month, so we need to get these bank fees, so now you have $57.82. If you do not replenish your skill sets, you're gonna run out and you're gonna be skill set bankrupt. You're not gonna have what it takes to be competitive in this current marketplace. In my group, I've been posting some stuff, and all of a sudden, people who were not talking about this recession are starting to talk about it. And there's a lot of chatter. And then the Fed is trying to remove one of these signals, one of the indicators from a recession, and I know why, because they know that it's going to drop below that point that has dropped each and every time, and it's the yield curve. It has predicted every recession we've had since they started charting it, and it's like that close to the point where we're gonna have a recession. So they're going to get rid of it for the midterms so they can say, hey, we have no economic indicators of a recession. Go ahead and vote Republican. They're gonna keep hopping these jobs up. They're gonna keep hopping up the stock market. They're gonna keep propping up, propping up, propping up. And then, for those of you who uh, are going, tax cuts. When you file your taxes next year, you're gonna be real salty. Because what you were giving versus what you were taking, what was taken away from you, it ain't gonna add up. You're gonna be like, this ain't right. Many of you are gonna pay more money this tax season than you did last tax season. But hey, you got a tax cut. Well, actually, the people like me got a tax cut, people who own companies. We got a 14% tax cut right off the top. No deduction, just boom, 14%. So if I were to make what I made last year, I would have a 14% raise even if I didn't get any new business and new clients. I got a raise. You didn't. And that's gonna become very, very clear. Now, why did I get a raise and you didn't? Because it's the skill sets. Because money is agnostic. Money don't care who make it. Money ain't racist. Money is not prejudice. Money don't care. Money will, be, money will pop in the hand of that prostitute, that drug dealer, that CEO, that hustler, that woman who started a business, money don't care. Money's agnostic.
but you're not because you want to make money doing what you want to do, how, you know, the way that you want to do it when you don't have the skill sets to do it the way that you want to do it, if you feel me. So in closing, get more skill sets, get as many skill sets as you can, because the more you have, it's like putting money in the bank. My skill sets have appreciated greatly. And one of the things that, you know, Tyron, I was talking, I have to act because see, I got complacent. I got fat, happy and comfortable. I didn't really have to work that hard. I was coasting. First world problems, I know. But once again, you see the time that I was in that boarding house, we're getting on the, the 20 year mark. Next year, it'll be 20 years that I've emerged from that situation. So it's kind of fuzzy. It's not as clear. The pain has dulled. If I don't act like I'm in that boarding house and start producing and acquiring more skill sets, because I've looked at myself and I had to check myself. It's like, gee, you were acquiring like, you know, 10 new skill sets a year. You got like two this year, bro, you slipping. You, once again, you fat, happy and comfortable. I have to be uncomfortable. I have to get out there and start killing more dragons. And